have one more thing. It's not, we're almost done. And that's the Lagrange equations for magnetic force. I did want to talk about this just so that next week we can talk about the, diff the Hamilton uh, and the uh, Hamiltons and Lagrange, Hamilton mechanics and the translation or the transition from Hamilton to Lagrange and Lagrange to, Mechan and to Hamilton, blah, blah, blah. Um, but let's talk, because we just saw what they are, right? The Hamiltonian is equal to, you know, the sum over all P, Q dots minus the Lagrangian. But, like, there's different ways of getting back and forth between the two of them. So we're going to talk more about that next week. But there are situations where the Lagrangian is equal to T minus U is not enough. And we kind of talked a little bit about them with dissipative forces and whatnot. But we're going to actually take a look at one. And one of them is the magnetic force known as the Lorenz force, right? Yes, the Lorenz with a T force. <clears throat> um, so consider our typical definition of our Lagrangian. This is how we need to start with the equations of our motions that evolve or that result from our Lagrange mechanics with some generalized coordinate, QI. So this is going to be true. We're just going to keep writing this a million times as we have, just because this needs to be burned into the back of your skull if you want to do some calculations with Lagrange mechanics. I Welcome to the channel. goes from Things one get a up to bit end. Weird. Okay. Do, 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 Lulamar, one, two, one, two. Thank you for the follow. Welcome to the channel. <sighs> and, uh, okay, yeah, so Tyrion, if you do need to re-ask the questions, ask them, and I'll just try to keep an eye and keep shifting things from one column to the next uh, the best that I can. So, specifically, let's think of a particle in one dimension, okay? So now in one dimension, we have this one. We're going to choose the extra dimension because... Uh, we are followers, and followers do what they're told. That's a joke. We're not followers. Um, but we are going to do one dimension in the x dimension, and now we're going to say, okay, so what if we have some f that acts, or what if we have some f that, you know, we can write as a function of x and x dot, okay? An example of this, you know, might be f is equal to x, x dot, right? This is going to show up soon because we're going to say, like, the, what if the potential has a velocity in it? If the potential has a velocity in it, things get a little bit hairier, okay? Um, okay, so. So then what do you get? Well, what if we also say that this is true? Which there are systems, like this system, where this turns out to be true. I think this might even be a definition. Maybe I have it in my notes as a definition. Let me double check Taylor to see what Taylor says. I don't want to lead you all astray. <clears throat> Maybe we have to define f to be true, and then we can give an example of what it is. Not really uh, super impactful for what we do. Yes, we're defining this to be true. My notes were correct. So we're defining this to be true, and then an example of this being true would be something like that. Okay? And uh, so we can craft a new Lagrangian, right? We'll just make up a new Lagrangian. We'll call it fancy L prime. Fancy L prime happens to be equal to the fancy L plus F. So the Lagrangian plus this function. And it happens that this gives the same equations of motion. The physics here aren't, or the math here isn't too important. What's important is the physics, okay? The physics is that there is a lack of uniqueness to this Lagrangian, right? You can change it. And if you change the Lagrangian, then some, you know, then, then it, you know, you get the same thing back, right? There are certain ways that you can rewrite Lagrangians, like adding terms to them, terms that require the, the velocity. And then you end up getting a Lagrangian with the same equations of motion for, ge for, for generalized coordinates. Let's be specific. For, gen for certain generalized coordinates, for degeneralized coordinates. So, what does that mean? Well, so if we consider, so now let's move to the electricity and magnetism. Ready? Consider a particle of mass M and charge Q in an electric field and a magnetic field with a Lorentz force, we love to hate it, F equals Q times E plus V cross B. If you've taken a junior or, what is it, even sophomore level, Electricity and magnetism, you've seen this. Even some people in introductory physics have seen this. And we can rewrite this as some generalized force in the R direction for Q. And of course, the R consists of X, Y, and Z. So now we have our Newton's laws here. Okay? 
Newton's laws. So if we want to understand the equations of motions with the Lagrange mechanics of a particle of mass m and charge q moving in a field and experiencing a Lorentz force, this is kind of similar to the charged particle on the surface of a cylinder, except now the constraint or the thing that's affecting it is not something like setting one of the velocities or, or yeah, one of the velocities to zeros, but instead it's going to be this extra term, okay? <clears throat> And we know the Maxwell's equations for this, okay? So that's where we're going to start with. We're going to start with the Maxwell's equations because you have to know something. If you're going to know, if you're going to know about this, neutrons are shady, guys. They have no charge. <laughs> they are pretty shady. That's true, QSD. Very true. Um, so you have to start somewhere. We're going to start with the Maxwell's equations. We know there's two types of potentials, and they show up in the Maxwell's equations, right? We have the scalar potential for the electric field, uh, and also in this equation is the uh, the vector potential. And then in the magnetic field, we have the curl of the vector potential. Okay? Now we can combine these equations, and this is going to be like our, this is going to be our guess. Okay? This is going to be our guess. And we're going to find out that the guess is a really good one. Let me, uh, let me uh, preface this by saying the people who did this did not guess. <laughs> but we're gonna guess. We're gonna say that this is what we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna have a Lagrangian like this. <clears throat> it's gonna equal the kinetic energy one half m r dot squared minus some version of the potential q times the scalar potential, which is not crazy. It's not crazy weird to think about. And then r dot this one's crazy in my opinion. R dot the inner product of r dot and a. Okay. Now, that one's a little bit crazy to me to just come up with on, on the women and a half, but nobody really like sat down and just thought this up. Okay, this is, this is, they knew. <laughs> no, no, they didn't know, but this is, but we do know now. And it's a great, it's a great learning mechanism. Okay, so, uh, so we're going to write down and we're going to just evolve it and see what happens. Okay, so we want to write it out in all of its component goodness. We're gonna have one half m times x dot squared plus y dot squared plus z dot squared minus q times v minus x dot. Wait, am I in the right spot? Yes, a x, the x component of a. My, we're just doing the inner product, so y dot a y and z dot a z. Sorry, it's a little bit of a runoff. You rewrite the last one. I think it's okay. Z times a z dot times a z. Okay. Hopefully, you guys can see that. Yeah, that's there. Okay. So, move that down. Nice, right? Let's look at the Euler-Lagrange equations for one of these. Okay. <clears throat> Again, we're going to write the same equation that I pretty much just erased. <laughs> but we're just going to keep writing it, because that's what we do here. Uh, in one direction, we're going to consider the x direction, of course. Change in time. We're going to find out that the other directions kind of follow the same laws. So it's golden. But there's going to be a fun result, like I said, a fun result that happens here. We're on the last page. We're almost done. This, today was a bit longer than usual. Um, what do we get? What do we get? What do we get? So the change in the Lagrangian with respect to x, we're going to do this side first. And what do we get? We get minus q times the change in the scalar with respect to x minus x dot q, or the derivative of ax, the derivative of x. Uh, minus y dot, the derivative of a y, oops, a y with respect to uh, x, and then z dot, derivative of a z with respect to x. Okay, good. So that's the, that's the left-hand side. And this is, again, our Lagrangian down here, so this is what we're doing with the derivative, okay? So we're taking the derivative of, I should say. Then next up, we have the derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to x dot, what do we get? An x dot, naturally, there's an x dot here, and there is one x dot in the potential. So we need to make sure we have that, plus q a x. So now we have something that's different than we're used to seeing. We're not used to seeing anything other than the this term, right? But it's there. So now by the chain rule, if we want to take the derivative with respect to time, again, this is the chain rule for this stuff. I did it earlier in one of the videos. Uh, we always talk about it again. We get mx double dot. Nice, right? 
plus Q times, and then we get a bit of a mess because we have AX and there could be anything inside of it. So we have X dot and we have the derivative of AX with respect to X plus Y dot AX with respect to Y plus Z dot derivative of AX with respect to Z plus the derivative of AX dt. We even talked a little bit about earlier, notice how there's a time derivative in each one of these and then there's this. Again, we have that physicist one that we have in there. <clears throat> so what does this tell us? Well, if we put these equations, so we're going to take this one and this one and we're going to put it here. Notice how there's one term that looks the same, q x dot here, q x dot here. They will end up going away. And what do we get? So notice how, I mean, that's an interesting result, right? Notice there's an x dot here and x dot here. And that's it for x dots. We have x double dot. But the x dot ends up going away. So what do we end up getting? Well, we'll have m x double dot, which is equal to q times. Ooh, this was a long one. Uh, let me give myself a little more room and write a little smaller. And this is kind of the really cool result, too. Or one of the cool results. Not as cool as the last thing we'll do, because that's like, no, I don't want to skip it. I want to do it. I want to write it down. Should we write it down? Should we skip it? Hmm, let's write it down. Minus Q, the derivative of, of the scalar potential with respect to X plus, notice that this is like just the AX stuff right here out front. Don't skip it. I won't skip it. I'll do it. It's a cool, it's a cool thing to write down and see. Because if you are like, if you need things written out in component form, like when I first did physics for a long time, I needed to write everything down in component form. Now I, I'm good at seeing things more condensed, but it took a long time to get there, I think. X minus AX dy. <clears throat> Notice this is AY dx AX dy. What component is this? It's not x, it's not y. Q, z dot, d, a, x, d, z, z, minus. Yeah, very good. You know, though, you cheat. And by cheat, I mean you, you actually read ahead. That's not cheating. <laughs> and there it is. And this is a, x, z, d, z, a, y, a, a, z, d, x, right? D, A, Z, D, X. So this is the Y component. So here you have the Z and the Y component. Do I have my minus signs right there, Tyrion? I do, I do, I do. Okay. So then this boils down to M, X, double dot, which is equal to Q times the X component of the electric field plus Y dot B, Z minus Z dot B, Y. Notice anything about this? How about the x component of this, right? If you take this cross product, you can write it like this, and you'll get a z component minus a y component for the x. And that's exactly what you get. You get all of the x component version of this. Beauteous! If you do the other components, y and z, you get the same thing as their y components and z components, right? So from this, we figured out that if you just start with these potentials, you don't need to know anything about this. You can start with these potentials, Maxwell stuff. You can figure out the Lagrangian. And what you get is the Newt Newton's laws of Lorentz force. So this is a really cool result. We get Newton's Lorentz force laws. We're almost done. I have one cool thing to show you. That's it. <clears throat> Let's talk about the generalized momentum for this. We have the power. We've talked about generalized momentum a bunch today. What does the generalized momentum do? Let me tell you what it does. Okay. Px equals the derivative of the Lagrangian with respect Finish to x dot. Finish it up so I can go. I'm going. I'm going. Mx dot plus qax. This is the x component of the momentum. And if you want to do it in 3D, you get the 3D. This is the generalized momentum. Mv plus qa. Right? So the generalized momentum is the mechanical, the thing that we've dealt with all through, the, the Atwood's machine and the ball on the cylinder and the blocks down the inclined plane. And 
and you get the mechanical stuff, but now we have something else that belongs to the magnetic field. Feels weird. Feels weird, man. <clears throat> so what do we do about this weird champ? Um, and this is the beginning of quantum mechanics, right? This is, this has its heart, and this is what Taylor says, it has a heart deep into quantum mechanics. This little bitty right here, that is deep into quantum mechanics. What does it look like in quantum mechanics? Well, you might have some, let's say what the, the, uh, the generalized momentum corresponds to in quantum mechanics is I H bar gradient. That's what the generalized momentum coordinate is in quantum mechanics. So what does that translate to in this? Well, that is saying that for a particle, a quantum mechanical particle in a, an electric field, the magnetic field with mass M and, and charge C, that the mechanical, well, I don't know why that's dotted. The mechanical uh, momentum, like it's momentum itself, has to do with the This thing right here, the generalized momentum, and also this extra term that's stuck from the magnetic field. So quantum mechanics, like you, we can see, maybe not the birth of quantum mechanics, but something very, very unintuitive happening in quantum mechanics. And something very exciting in quantum mechanics that, uh, that you don't, Maybe you don't think about it as being a result of classical mechanics, but here it is. I mean, this is right here. The only thing we did was say that this is a generalized coordinate in, Lagra in um, quantum mechanics. But it, it shows up in Lagrange mechanics. In Lagrange mechanics, that you, that even in Lagrange mechanics, you still have extra stuff. What does that extra stuff translate into? Well, something, something very unintuitive and strange. Um, well, anyways, that's it. Part six. Donezo. I think that was an hour. That was one, definitely one of the longer ones. We usually don't take an hour to do it. <clears throat> but we had some great conversations in the middle of it, too, so it was kind of hard to, like, pass those up. <clears throat> so what do you think? Was that cool? Are we cool quantum mechanics? Question time. Cool, crazy guy's been waiting for questions. Let's go to questions.